And so today, I'm going to be sharing about the mother's power of influence. And so, if today was the last chance for you to say or do something to make an impact on the world, what would it be? So just think about that real quickly. If today was the day, millions of people that you could impact in one moment, if I, if I gave you that chance, or someone gave you that chance today. Perhaps you're thinking, you know, I'm really not influential enough to be heard. Who's going to listen to me? Uh, maybe you're thinking, is my platform wide or big enough to speak to millions of people? Well, you know what? Let's think about this. Jesus spoke to many people. He spoke to hundreds and thousands of people, and they followed him. He did not advertise big promises. He did not delegate an advertising team to beef up his messages so that it would be believable. Right? No, the people, they heard his voice, and they followed him, and they listened. They were hungry for his words, the life-giving, thought-provoking, miracle words. He did not send them away when he was tired. He did not become angry when they continuously saw him. They were following him, and they were gathering in large crowds into small spaces. We've read this in the Bible. They would skip meals to be with him because they were thirsty for his presence. And then he gave them life. He gave them miracles of life. He gave healing to the sick. He gave hope for the weary and life. He gave them promises of eternal life. He gave them hope, right? Christ invested in the people. We saw that. We, we can read that because he listened to them. He prayed for them. He nurtured them. He loved his people and they loved him. He had the power of influence. And did he change the world? It is not because of his supernatural abilities or this powerful earthly platform that he changed the world. Moms, you may not feel like a world changer you might not even believe that you can change a life. But you were first life givers. You carried or gifted the life that you're entrusted to now. What a miracle we've been given. By whom? The one that was the miracle giver. He was a miracle maker, and he gave us miracles. And to consider that we think we can't change the world, when I look at mamas that I know, and I look out amongst here in the room, those who have passed the torch onto us, I see strength and I see courage. Why then do we only feel a special honor of Mother's Day, only impressed upon us on our hearts on Mother's Day? Perhaps we've lost the vision, moms, of being a life changer the other 364 days of the year. It's not just today. I know how it is, because the minutes, they multiply into days, and then they fast forward to years. It's hard to consider the decisions and the tedious tasks we make every single day, each and every one, they, that they could be world-changing moments. Who listening today, what person in this room, has ever been impacted by another person's life? Whether it's your mother, or someone else in your life that has left an imprint on your heart. Think about that right now. There's someone. Because you know what? Moms are multitaskers. I am. Um, not only can they prepare dinner, draw bath water, finish reading to the preschoolers, running a few middlers and teens to soccer games and schedules, mothers also are, while doing this, processing the next day, right? We're already thinking ahead. The crease in the eyebrows that we see sometimes, the stoop of the back or the dish-worn hands, 
these are only a physical imprints that you will recognize when you are observing a mother. God knew that the world needed a special person to be a mother. The one that can walk the babies through the night, who can braid hair with a straight part right down the middle, a special person who can throw a ball back and forth in the grass, swing a few children at a time on the swings, and then also listening to the motions of growing teens while they're preparing a meal for the next day. God knew that when he formed woman, she would perhaps someday bear children and give them a special nurturing spirit God did. He gave moms or women a spirit to calm a fearful child, to press them close when they are sad, to see a need or a pain tucked deep into the heart of a teen before it even surfaces, and to be able to gently pry it open, the gates of communication. And when God made mothers, he gave her a special place within her heart that would bear pain. Pain and loss, pain and suffering, pain and empty thrown words from an angry or hurt child, a place that will bear the pain and then let the redemption of his son take it away. And the love for that child never, never changes, it never ceases, and it will always stay the same because she is mother. God knew that a mother would need sharp ears and quick reflexes to hear a child's cry or to snag their coat when they're clo too close to the road. She has a heart to teach them, a God-given spirit of wanting the best for each of her children. The miracle of life-giving, though, does not end in the delivery room or when you're given another child entrusted with their care. Each day, each day is a miracle of learning, teaching, growing, discovery, and then someday, release. The heartstrings are strong, and they are eventually broken, but the cords of love are constant. A mother leaves an imprint do you feel the imprint of another person in your life? Again, I ask, who is that person? The character in moms or another person that leaves an imprint on the world is this. It's that of a servant leader. Christ was the perfect servant leader. Our children are watching. Not just moms, they're watching everyone. They're listening, and they're grasping it every minute, even when they turn a cold shoulder on our words of love. They're still watching. So how does a mother survive the pull and the push and the press? How do they survive, and how do they influence and impact the next generation? Well, the thing that was pressed upon my heart is that we need time with the Father. Just like the people followed Christ, and they needed him, and they clung to his every word. Moms need to stay connected with the Father. If we wait until we find the time, we might as well forget it, because motherhood and free time, they're not even on the same clock. We need to make time. Imagine the imprint of a daily time in the Word with a child. What if our spirit moms are being filled with the word of God daily. What's going to happen? There's an overflow. When a child or a teen or a doll or one of us observes someone else and we see goodness in someone, what do we think? Oh, I want that so much. We spend time in the word. We are filled with the spirit. What do you think our children are going to think? What do you think they're going to want? What an empty vessel we would be if by the end of a long day we have not been refilling ourselves with life-giving words of hope, strength, power, and I say conviction. If I'm not changing, my children can't change. 
The other day I was in my room um, attempting to have this time I'm telling you about, this time with the father. And um, I have some little ones. And so I had one child uh, sat on the floor next to me. I set her up with some crayons and a coloring paper. And then I had another child. She had her um, dolls. And, um, you know, I'm trying to read the Bible. But I didn't tell them, this is mommy's time. You know, I was just fitting it in. I thought maybe they'll be quiet for a couple minutes. I'm reading. And the the baby, t- who's two, is just getting louder and louder. And I was having more and more trouble focusing. And I was actually becoming upset about it, thinking, this is, you know, how am I supposed to find time for this? And so um, I was getting a little frustrated. And then out of the blue, I have this child. She's four, a little girl. And she just seems to be very in tune with what? I need all the time. It, I'll have, I have another story for you later about her, but she just always seems to say the right things at the right time. So I'm re- trying to read my Bible, and I, I literally, I was holding my desk like this, and I finally just sat, and I closed my eyes, almost probably like I looked frustrated and defeated. Like, okay, this isn't going to work. And, and then my four-year-old quietly says to the baby, um, come on. We're going to leave the room because mommy needs to find time for God, and she's not going to learn anything if we don't be quiet. (laughs) You know, like, thank you, God, for, like, injecting these words through a child, and they just kind of both got up and left, and I just sat there. Like, I had no excuse now, you know. I really, really need to um, spend time. But there's a lot of creative ways. We need to fill ourselves with the word. Um, And also, secondly, I was thinking... We need to be led by the Spirit. People joke, I think, a lot about a woman's intuition. Honestly, I believe when it comes to being a mom, there's a whole new level of understanding of what that means. Um, I believe that if and when a woman is in the Word, truly abiding in Christ, then the Holy Spirit will speak to her. He will guide her. He will give her direction each day. This is a biblical principle of not um, being able to live out each day in our own strength. That's what that means. We can't be a mom in our own strength. We can't get up and say, I'm going to be a good mom today. I'm not going to be angry when that teenager comes in the door. I'm not going to get frustrated when there's a mess on the floor. I'm going to do it. There's no such thing as that. We have to be filled with the Spirit. We can't do this in our own strength. The Gospel of John clearly shows us that this is what the Spirit is for. The Gospel of John says that the Spirit is a helper, that the Spirit will guide us in truth, that the Spirit is a witness to Christ, and the Spirit is the Spirit of truth. Mother, are you filled with the Spirit? We want to pass this torch of faith onto our children. How can we do that if we don't have it? We have to have faith. We need to lead by example, rightly dividing the word of truth when we're in hard situations, allowing the spirit to flow through us in our speech and our reactions and our decisions. And um, this doesn't mean we're perfect, right? You know, I'm standing here today. I have 10 kids. Every day I make mistakes. That's my children. Every day I make choices that aren't being filled with the Spirit. But when we're searching and we desire and we grasp onto the truth, it will be more likely to come out of us if we're not, right? So um, an example, I was thinking with my husband and I were talking about this, about being filled with the Spirit and what people call as a woman's intuition is, um, have you ever had this happen to you? that some days you just have someone on your mind. Like all day long, this person just keeps coming to your mind. You're like, oh, I wonder how they're doing. That, that's the spirit. Call them. Write them. Text them. How are you doing? I just keep thinking about you. Your name just keeps coming to my mind. Well, as a mom, how about this? There's just something not right so-and-so, this child of mine, just, I can tell something's not right. They're holding something in. We need to talk to them. Well, you know, you get busy. The days go by, and um, the minutes go by, and it's nighttime, 
And this has happened in our home with one particular child. And, you know, certain children listen better to certain parents, right? You know, there's just like this connection. Well, my husband reminded me today that um, a lot of times, many, many times, that I, we've been, you know, we'll go to bed at night and I'll say, you know, I just really feel that this particular child needs us right now. That's, that's God telling us, don't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. And so I say to my husband, well, why don't you go talk to this child? Why don't you go pray with this child? He's like, well, why don't you go do that? <laughs> I'm like, well, you know that they're going to listen to you better. And he's like, yeah, you're right, because he knows this child better. And um, so he'll go, and I'll end up falling asleep because, yes, there was something on that child's heart. And he ends up praying with the child. And they talk and talk and cry and share their heart. But what would happen if we didn't listen to what God is saying about our children? We didn't follow. That's not by accident. Don't ignore that. Living in the Spirit is God's divine plan because you know what? This is it. It frees us up from being the mother in our own power. We don't have to do this. We don't have to do this alone. And thirdly, Christ poured himself into his disciples. He did. Read through the Gospels. Verse after verse, Jesus is pouring himself into the disciples. He's teaching. He's praying with them. He is praying over them. He's praying through them. He would feed them. He would travel with them. He loved them. He nurtured them. He admonished them. And he gave them hours of discipleship. Mother. He spent the second half of his life pouring himself into others that they might in turn do what? Was, what was he doing this for? that they would go and tell the world. Mother. For many years, I have been September, the mom with a lot of kids. And as this continues, when people meet me, they say, ah, you're September, the one with all the kids. That's, you know, it's not like, <laughs> I've heard these great things about you. Just, you're September. And so for 21 years, I have been pouring my minutes, my days, and my life into my family. And I've recently experienced something new. Something my mom told me that would happen. Now when I meet someone new, they say, oh, you're September. I've heard a lot about you. But now they say, too. Oh, you're Sarah's mom. You're Ben's mom. So you see what's happening? People now know my children. And the biggest question is, what do they know about my children? <laughs> I don't know, you know. No. Because, yes, all children make their own choices. Some moms, dads, some will walk away from God. But when we do have a reason to rejoice over the words that come back to us about how we've invested in them, it's not about us. It's about the seeds of time, the effort, and the amazing work that now God is going to do in their life. Kingdom work. Right? Some days I come to a screeching halt, just screeching halt, when I realize I have just completely emptied all my energy, all my love and time, 24 hours into my family. It's not work that can be seen. It's the invisible kingdom work. I'm not applauded at the end of the day, but I know the life-changing difference in my children is going to make them world changers. My power of influence will make them world changers. So, that keeps me refilling myself. It keeps me going. It's not for naught. may seem so some days. Some mornings I wake up and my littlest children will crawl into bed with me and um, they'll just lay there. And the other day, my four-year-old, she took my hand and she started having me wipe her, you know, rub her head. She's very physical, loves to be cuddled. And so she's 
And I said, do you, um, you want me to rub your head? <laughs> she said, yes, mommy. And then she was quiet for a minute. So I'm rubbing her head and I'm looking at her. I'm studying her. And she said, mommy, I just want to be near you. And I thought, someday my children won't be near me. And this could have been a really hard day. I could have woken up and thought, how am I going to do this? But God gave me that gift that morning, reminded me that they want to be near me. They're going to follow my lead. Fourthly, there will be naysayers. Christ, did he experience this? There will be naysayers. Again and again, we tell our own children this, don't we? We tell them, ignore the negative, press on, do what you know is right, do what God says to do is right, do the right thing. And so why then, when we think of our parenting, do we think that it's going to be any different? If I listened to the naysayers, I would have stopped having children. After listening to a few people say, well, I stood by the graveside and buried some of my own children, this is too hard, don't have any more. If I listened to the naysayers, if I listened to the naysayers, I would have decided not to homeschool. If I listened to the naysayers, I would have allowed my children to watch movies that were beyond my conscientious choices. I would have not required my children to do chores for the concern of those that thought it was child labor to have them learn responsibility and diligence. We are responsible for our children. They are our offering. They're given on loan, and they're expected to be returned a worthy vessel. And hell is going to chase them. And the gates of heaven are wide open, waiting for this worthy vessel. Is there no better thing to invest in? Sometimes my biggest naysayer, my biggest critic, is myself. And I have to keep remembering, he just wants my best. He doesn't want perfect. So what does the power of influence look like? Because you know what? This is what I keep telling myself. A lot of people are like, I just want my legacy to be. I just want my legacy to be. I think our legacy isn't quite as important as our difference. It is hard to be a world changer. It's hard to be a life changer because that makes all the difference in the world. You can have a legacy, but are you changing the world? From the moment we carry or adopt or bring another child into our family, the daily care, the daily nurturing, the daily investments, and the words, they become the structure by which we live, all of us, every home, every family represented in this room. How they think, how they feel, how they moved into a world depraved of genuine love and sacrifice. You would agree with me, wouldn't you, that this world is depraved. You're going to send your children out into it. Fill them now. Be a world changer. If as parents, we do not believe enough that the message Christ himself came to live, how can they, in turn, believe it? One person at a time. That is what the power of influence looks like. You're not, God didn't want you to just take on the world. He gave you these children, these lives, to change, to invest. That's how you can be an influence in the world. You don't have to be something grand or have a big platform. It wasn't a mistake that you're a mom. I'm sure you've seen the plaster Paris or the cement molds that um, you can buy and take home and you have the op options to like stamp footprints or handprints in and then you can give them for Mother's Day or Grandparents' Day or Father's Day. It makes me think about this. Two words. Christ not only died for our sins. He stamped out the sin in our lives, leaving us with eternal life. But he lived. His life here on earth was an impact through his life. 
while he was here. He lived and he died. Two amazing examples, life-changing for us. He lived out the gospel. He walked and he talked the word. He gave hope and he gave love and he gave himself. Mothers, you have the power of influence, one child at a time, one family at a time. When you are weary, when you're worn thin, and you're walking the halls of your home, and you see the dirty fingerprints, and you see the staircase full of clothing, like in our house, and you see muddy footprints on the floor, and then at the end of the day, you see the smudges of dirt or food that have come onto your clothes from a life, the life that you gave, mother. Remember, that's your imprint. God is just waiting for our dependence. He's just waiting for us to call on him. What you do is what your children do. Did I tell the story last year when I was here about my two youngest children in Salvation Army? Did I tell this story? I have so many stories. I have 10 kids times 365 days a year. We have a lot of stories. So my two oldest children... um, you know, when, when you only have a couple, and then you have so much more time to invest in them. So we're at Salvation Army. We go there half off days. Does anyone else do that? Okay, yeah. Woo. So we go there on half off days, and um, I was shopping, and I, was, I became a little um, detached from them. You know, we became familiar with the store, so they would just kind of go off to the toy area, the book area. Does anyone else do that too? It's like a little babysitting corner. And so they go over there, and they were... Um, playing, I thought, and I would just keep peeking over the racks, you know, with them, and I'm like combing through the, the hangers real fast, and um, it was time to go, and I come back, and I said, now I may get the story a little wrong, but I said to Ben, who's the oldest, um, at that time I think they may have been six and five probably, so I said, it's time to go, and he's like, no, no, and um, I said, well, why not, and um, Sarah comes over, And I'm like, Sarah, we really need to go. You need to tell Ben it's time to go. And she said, we can't. Ben is getting someone saved. And I said, what are you talking about? And so long story short, Ben and Sarah were talking to another little child in Salvation Army, and their hearts were on fire. They were burning to share the message of the gospel. And so Ben told Sarah, who seemed to be the more bold as far as, like, doing daring things, you go and you corner that boy and tell him he can't go home. He's going to go to hell if he doesn't know God. So he went, she did, she cornered him, and she wouldn't let him out of the toy area. And then he was crying because he was afraid he'd die. And, you know, I'm like, what? Yeah, it was very, like, we had a long talk afterwards about sharing the gospel. But long story short, long story short, they did. And Ben and Sarah told this little boy about their need for Jesus. I mean, that was really what was in their heart. And, and um, they let the little boy go, and he looked a little happier than, yeah. And, but I could see his mom, like, you know, holding his hand, like, get in the store, you know. Like, just, what are those kids doing over there? But I remember thinking that, that this is just an example of, um, you know, what see, children see, what's in their hearts, what's being planted every day. It is. It does come out, right? It comes out in ways we just can't imagine. And so um, our children teach us a lot of things. I had a turning point in my motherhood. I don't even know if I shared the story, but I had three children at this time. And so that was 18 years ago. 16, I don't know. It's all blur. And so um, we were driving down the road, and I was having a really rough day. And uh, I think I did share the story, but I'm going to share it anyways again. And um, so I'm driving our van, and um, I think I might have even been crying. You know, when you have three kids and they're in car seats, you don't think they're really paying attention, but they are. And so I was crying, and out of the blue, I think it was my Matthew, who's number three, he says, Mommy, let's sing a song. And I said, no, we're not singing a song. He's like, let's sing a song. I said, no. And then Ben, the oldest, he's always been very sensitive about who I am as a person. And he said, you know, Mom, you did tell us that 
This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So, uh, you know, I'm thinking, okay, thank you, God. So they started singing, this is the day, this is the day, you know, and I'm still like, Whoa. and, um, you know, they sang it a couple times. We were singing songs in our house more than once, and by the time they were done, they, you know, my day, my outlook was just more of an eternal perspective because, they were becoming world changers. They were changing me from the inside out, right? Sometimes we just teach because we know, because we don't feel it. <clears throat> One last thing in John 15, talks about the vine and the branches. Moms, just cling to the vine. Stay close to the vine. Attach yourself to the vine. God promises that it will, what? bear fruit, and that you will not come away empty. And in turn, your children themselves will want to stay connected. There is a release, but they will want to stay connected to the vine. And that is our prayer as moms, isn't it? So remember one thing today, that you are world changers. And that this is your imprint right here, mothers. You are beautiful. You are a world changer. Believe it, because I do. Hi, I'm Pastor John McConnell. And I'd like to welcome you today for watching our program. It's just amazing the technology we have today that we're able to live stream all around the world. And we'd like to give you an opportunity, if you'd like to give towards this ministry, you can go online and be able to uh, follow the directions that are on there and be able to give to the ministry that you've been watching. So God bless you. We thank you for being part of Southside Alliance Church today.